So, well, to begin this webinar, I would very much like to welcome the first speaker, Graham Holder, who will provide a brief introduction to electrophysiological testing. For those who don't know, Graham is a professor of ophthalmology in the National University of Singapore and is one of the most experienced, influential and eminent world authorities when it comes to clinical visual electrophysiology equipped to the visual system. So it's a great pleasure. Good evening. We'll start with an introduction to electrophysiological testing. You will be familiar with the anatomy of the visual system and the visual evoked potential of the response to a reversing checkerboard or to a luminance or stimulus arises in the occipital cortex, but is non-specific. Arising at a cortical level, it can be affected by anywhere anterior in the visual pathway to the cortex, including the chiasm, the optic nerve, but also the macula, inappropriate refraction, vitreous opacities, etc. Moving to the eye, the electrooculogram measures the interaction between the retinal photoreceptors and the retinal pigment epithelium and is a measure of the global health of the RPE. The ERG is a mass response of the retina to a luminance stimulus and can be used to separate the function of the cone system from the rod system and from the photoreceptors from the inner nuclear layer. But as a mass response, it is normal if the dysfunction is confined to the macula. To test the macula, we can use either a contrast response or reverse and checkerboard, the pattern ERG, which although arising largely in the ganglion cells is driven by the macular photoreceptors, or we can use a luminance response, the multifocal ERG, which enables a spatial distribution of central retinal cone function to be assessed. As a contrast response and a luminance response, the pattern and multifocal ERG provide complementary information. We need electrodes to record the small signals, and these upper three electrodes can be used either for pattern ERG or multifocal ERG. The contact lens electrodes shown below cannot be used for pattern ERG as they interfere with the optics of the eye. These are all ERGs in a normal subject under dark adaptation, and they're all different, and is therefore evident that standardization is of fundamental importance to communication between laboratories. Here, note that with a red stimulus under dark adaptation, there's an early component from the cone system, a late component from the rod system. These are the four main ERGs mandated by the International Society for Clinical Electrophysiology of Vision. We start off with a dim flash in the Gansfeld in a dark adapted eye. PA is dark adapted, LA light adapted. 0.01 is a dim flash, 10 is a bright flash. And with a dim flash and a dark adapted eye, we get a response known as a B wave, which arises in the on bipolar cells of the rod system. And arising at an inner retinal level gives sensitivity, but not specificity. When we use a bright flash under dark adaptation, we then get the A wave, which is predominantly coming from the rod photoreceptors. There is a small contribution from the cones in this dark adapted response in a normal, but the cones are very small in number compared to the rods, and this is a predominant rod response. And the B wave continues to arise at an inner nuclear level. So this gives specificity between photoreceptors and inner nuclear layer disease. We then light adapt the patient by turning on the light at the background bowl that provides a rod suppressing background, and we then flash a light at 30 times a second. The rods can't respond, so this is a cone-driven response giving sensitivity. Specificity is then achieved by a single flash cone ERG with the A wave coming from the photoreceptors uh, and modified by the off bipolar cells, and the B wave, a synchronized response from on and off bipolar cell pathways. Analysis takes place of the size, timing of the response. These are reasonably large signals, easy to record, but also the shape of the response. And this is a minimum recommendation, and additional recordings may well be necessary. The pattern ERG is the response of the retina to a reversing checkerboard. And the experimental work of Laura Frischman and our clinical work has shown that the N95 component arises in the retinal ganglion cells. And although about 70% of P50 arises in the ganglion cells, it's driven by the macular photoreceptors. And therefore, if we have macular disease, P50 is affected. But if we have ganglion cell dysfunction, either primary ganglion cell disease or retrograde degeneration to the ganglion cells from primary optic neuropathy, then P50 can be spared 
and the N95 component show a selective abnormality. The pattern ERG therefore enables accurate interpretation of the pattern VEP. It is important to remember that the pattern ERG is never extinguished by optic nerve disease. This is a sad case of a patient with a very large intracranial meningioma who has a blind left eye. But even in that blind left eye with no pattern VEP and no flash VEP, there is still a detectable response from the macula. P50 is smaller than its fellow eye, and there is marked N95 component loss bilaterally, in fact. But there's also a shortening of P50 peak time. And if you look at the shape of this response, that's exactly what happens when you, this is Laura Frischman's work, when you inject tetrodotoxin, which blocks all spiking cells into the vitreous of a macaque, there is com almost complete loss of the N95 component. P50 becomes shorter and smaller, but it does not become extinguished. Just to summarize with the type of the abnormality we get in ERG, if we have dysfunction of the photoreceptors, that will affect the photoreceptor-derived A wave and give global ERG reduction. Whereas if we have primary disease, either at the bipolar cells themselves, at the synapse or in the inner nuclear layer, then we will preserve the photoreceptor-derived A wave, affect the positive-going B wave, leaving a negative-going wave, which is known as an electronegative ERG. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Graham. And we've now got some chance to discuss your presentation. And um, please post any questions you have in the Q&A box. But whilst we look at that, may I ask a question, Graham? May I ask, in your view, can we make these visual electrophysiological tests that are really quite complex, can we make them more accessible? How do you think we can best go about that? Accessible to whom? Yeah, more widely to different clinics, perhaps. They tend to be in tertiary referral centres, don't they, often? Well, one of the challenges, of course, is that the technicians need to be adequately trained. The recordings are not that simple to do. It's not some, as simple as taking an ophthalmic technician, teaching them which buttons to press on an OCT machine, and you get half decent responses. The technician has to understand what they're doing. They have to recognise the signals. They have to deal with artefact. And the role of the technician is absolutely fundamental because if the data which come to me or to you or to whoever's going to interpret those data are not 100% at the level they should be, then the interpretation is meaningless. Mm. No, it's very valuable, isn't it? It's important that we get training um, established, I think, internationally. Yeah, think. and I think the same applies to the people who do the interpretation. It's best if people have a subspecialty fellowship rather than just look at an ERG and say it's there or it's not there. Because you have to understand the origins of the signals before you can relate the origins of the signals to the signals that are recorded in the patient and therefore relate those signals to the underlying pathophysiology of the disease. Yes. I've, I've got one other little question, which is, would you actually have one test that you would always use in every situation? Or no. would it always vary? No, because it would depend on the clinical question. So you would always select them. I wondered whether you had a particular penchant for the pattern ERG as you were you know, quite instrumental in making that applicable. Well, it, depends, it depends what the question is. I mean, if you're dealing with a, a three-month-old child who's questionably blind, then a pattern ERG is not going to help you very much. No, that's quite true. That's quite true. Okay. Yeah. So um, I think now... Um, thank you very much, Graham. There, there are no further questions at the moment. I'm sure there'll be more later.